Now, let me give you a tip. Things are divided into groups, separated. It's exactly the same with people. You can't mix the groups. The rural America of 1969 had zero regulations around private property. If you owned the land and wanted to invite people to come sleep on your turf, you called the shots. That was the idea of private property, right? And then came Woodstock. When Max Yasger gave permission to Woodstock Ventures to host its festival, the local stuff shirts tried to fast track laws necessary to restrict such a gathering, but they ran out of time. Woodstock happened. The resources and hospitality of the Bethel community was pushed beyond its limits. After the festival, Max was sued, loss of crops and a whole raft of transgressions. New York State spent a ton of tax dollars creating a permit system that made it illegal for people to sleep outside, even on private property. These codes became known as the Woodstock Laws, and the objective was always to stop another Woodstock from ever happening. Interesting to note that none of the 932 towns in New York State ever enforced these codes. None, except for the town of Bethel. So all this shit went down over 25 years, and hippies kept coming back every August to celebrate the anniversary. But then Max Yasker sold the farm in 1971. Woodstock hippies quickly realized the new owners were a little less tolerant of their gatherings. Those hippies endured years of constant harassment. Yeah. And then, in 1996, the billionaire cable TV guy, Alan Jerry, purchased the land and began developing the old farm into what is now Bethel Woods Performing Arts Center. No. The first thing developers did was dig a huge trench around the field's perimeter, making access dangerous, and then by dropping 10,000 tons of chicken shit on top What's of it. What's up, man? You can't keep us down here like this. Get back, get back, or you're all gonna get maced. <laughs> But the hippies kept coming back. And this is how Yazga Road Reunion was born. Local businessman Roy Howard had purchased the 100-acre homestead of Max and Miriam Yazger, and had lived there with his partner Gerald and son Zach since 1993. When the Woodstock field was ruled out of bounds, Roy told the hippies, OK, come pitch your tents at my place. The town of Bethel responded to Roy's hospitality by slapping an injunction on him and said, no, you can't do that, not without a permit. They changed every law. They made it absolutely impossible for a dog to bark. That battle was still ongoing when Roy Howard passed away in 2013. He died January 29th. They gave me the permit April 6th. I'm devastated. But, Gerald took up the fight, and the former Yasker homestead became a permanent campground, and every August hosts a three-day music festival, which promotes peaceful assembly, human kindness, and pays homage to the expression of human spirit. Yaskers, yeah! What my dad started here, and my mom kept going, is something that I plan to keep going for a long time, and it's, uh... It's a lot of work, but if it weren't for the people that come here and the joy that I get out of doing it every year, I wouldn't be chasing it as hard as I am. So I, I'm happy to do it for the people that come here and make it all worth it. Everybody, everybody like those signs we put up? Max's Mountain, Roy's Ridge, and Gerald's Junction. Finally got them up. All right, love you all. See you all tonight, and keep your drum alive. 50 years ago, Vonnegut Slaughterhouse 5 was published. Beatles Abbey Road and the rooftop last public show went down. Monty Python, the Stonewall Riots, and the first electronic communication between two computers was made via a rapinette. Concluding, the journey began by Gutenberg into the consciousness of the common man. I waited 50 years for this. This is it. This is, this is the garden. It this is, is home. Garden. It is. Yeah. It's when the people were saying yesterday, welcome home, welcome yeah. home. It is. It's welcome home. I, I finally feel at home. This is about having a like-minded purpose to find a better life and move on. And I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. 
it didn't turn out well. It got so far and then it just rolled back. Yeah. So, but did well, it roll back all the way? I suppose that's no, question. no. I somebody yesterday told me a couple of days ago they were said because I it was raining on us and I said, Do you remember in the Woodstock movie when everybody chanted no rain? Yeah. And I said, What happened? And he said, It rained. I said, well, there, you, you know, there you have it. All that right mindedness doesn't necessarily become true. But the experiment's still running. You know, it's a legacy of activism, social change, and trying to do the right thing. It seems to resonate even louder today than it did back then, in some ways, because of what's going on in our country and around the world. Looks like there's a moment of hope for everybody. Because the only way I can understand that generation is through their perspective, not my generation's perspective on their generation, because the generations are totally different, so it would never work. So, as Carl Santana said, you have to go through it to get to it, meaning I pretty much wear the clothes, comb my hair in the style, listen to the music, embody the spirituality, smoke the herb, drop the acid from time to time, and just embody that spirit and that generation to the point where I feel like I'm a part of it. Welcome! Hey, Roy, thank you! Yeah. Joe, you had to jump through hoops of fires to get this done. So we're thankful that you did this for us. Thank you. By the way, this is the man of the hour. Yeah. 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 I have every confidence that we will continue the spirit of Woodstock yeah. for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. It made a, made a very big difference in a lot of people's lives. I think everybody who was at the original festival had their lives changed. And Michael Lang, thank you so much because without you, we would not be having this conversation and Bethel would not be on the map telling people not to park here. <laughs> Now that we can camp, next step is we're going to park. Yeah. It's been said that nothing exists without its opposite. And from Yasby Road, it was just three miles up the road of what Roy Howard called the millionaire's place. You know, the gentrified, manicured version of the Woodstock idea. It was never about that, and that's why it's forever entwined with a sense of loss. Music is all about rocks with Ringo Starr and associated with Coca-Cola Classic. You can't beat the feeling. Produced by Terry School. Who are we seeing tonight, Hermie? Ringo. <laughs> yes. But first, here's Blood, Sweat, and Tears. In 1969, Blood, Sweat, and Tears played Woodstock and received the second highest paycheck, a cool 15 grand. There's no original members in the current lineup. The last original member, drummer Bobby Colombi, quit in 76. He still owns the Blood, Sweat, and Tears name. He hires top-notch players to go out and represent the legend, the brand. Kind of like the Yankees. No one expects to see Babe Ruth, right? Sounds feasible. Providing you believe music is a sport and band members hang in a dugout waiting to sub. Ringo, Ringo, Ringo. It's the Ringo Star! thing. No one could really define it, and it's not really groovy to talk about, but you know it when you see it. 
And here it was, the Beatles drummer singing songs from the soundtrack of our lives. Every one of you will know at least one song tonight. Okay? Don't come easy. for Ringo Starr and his all-star band, right? Yeah, that's right. Joe, well, why do we give it on a, a score of 1 to 10, Harmony? Well, you know, for Ringo Power, you know, you have to give it a, like a, you know, 10 out of 10 because it was Ringo's show, right? Yeah. And, and he was great. One quarter of a Beatle, uh, yeah. Beatles is better than no quarters of Beatles, right? I've never seen a Beatle on stage, so i got to say. Close as I'm ever going to get, ma'am. Uh, one Beatle out of four. Right. Is okay by me. So that's 100% on that score. 100%. I wasn't disappointed. Right. You know. That was good. We yeah, I like the, the, the songs at the end, of course. You know, Photograph. I love Photograph. Always have. Um, and a nice version of With a Little Hope for My Friends. Yeah. And a, and a nice little nod to his old Beatle buddy, John. Give peace a chance, right? Absolutely. It was a great ending. And yeah. we did capture quite a bit of that, so. Yeah. Can't complain about that, man. Can't complain about that. And now it's time to uh, drop acid. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So we'll see you in around about 36 hours. Okay. All right. Oh, 